good coffee. All right, so let's do a painting with brushes. We're going to be doing a winter landscape. And we're going to be using brushes, quickest way to open brushes. <coughs> Pull down on the background of the iPad and tap B on the keyboard. It's right above the space bar. By the way, uh, just as a quick uh, little note here, this recording, some of the buttons might look a little bit different than what you see on your screen because I'm using an iPad mini and the screen's a, a bit smaller, so they might put the buttons in some different places. So here we see Brushes Redux, open it up, and we open up to the Brushes app. And this is the gallery. Uh, if you do not open up to the gallery, let's say you, uh, the person who had your iPad before, left their painting open, which is a no-no, they shouldn't do that, and you're not going to do that either, because, look, I can start painting on their painting and goofing it all up. Not cool, right? So what you're going to want to do in the upper left hand corner, right, oops, right there, you're going to tap on that gallery button. So tap back to the gallery. First order of business is in the upper right hand corner to touch the plus button. And I need you to check two things. Right underneath where it says new painting, it should say iPad Retina. And then just below it, you'll see your piece of paper. Make sure that piece of paper is in landscape style, side to side. If it's not, just tap it. It'll rotate like that. Make sure it's in landscape style because <gasps> we're going to make a landscape. Yeah. So make sure it's landscape. If you see iPad Retina and you got your paper in landscape, touch Create. And that's going to take you to the painting page. And you're going to want to do stuff like this. Woohoo! Yay! I'm painting! But don't do that yet. Because I haven't told you what to do yet. So, let's talk about the undo and the redo brush. Down on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see two squiggly arrows. One going left and one going right. The one going left is the undo button, which I just used. And the one going right is the redo button. Those are going to be handy because we're never going to want to use the eraser. The eraser takes too long and is not precise. The undo button takes a second and is extremely precise. Now, before we proceed, before we start a painting, we need to go back to the gallery. So tap right there again and go back to the gallery because we've got to put our name on our paper. Now, your, pa your painting will be the very last file in the bottom. It'll probably say painting and then a number. Uh, everybody's number might be a little bit different. Mine says painting too. We've got to change where it says painting to your name. And then we're going to put your teacher name or your group on at, after that so that we can keep everybody kind of nice and organized here. So what you're going to need to do is right on the word where it says painting, double tap. And that's going to bring up the keyboard. You're going to want to use that undo button, which you can see lighting up. Get rid of everything that's in there. Type in your name and your group or teacher. If you're in a group, type the group. If, you are, if you're in a class and you're just a teacher, type the teacher's name. Then tap the big blue done button. Alright, and now we're ready to open our painting back up. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to need to talk about some of the buttons. We already talked about the undo and the redo button. Those are going to be handy. Now this thing right here, that's the size slider. If I slide low, I get that. If I slide big, I get that. Okay? What we're going to want to do for the first thing is fill this whole paper in. So we're going to want to move it all the way up to 512, but don't paint yet. Now the next button that we're going to talk about is the brush button. So we're going to want to open up that menu right there and we're going to want to select a brush a lot like what you see I have here. Mine is highlighted in blue. Right, oops, there. And we're going to use this for the majority of our painting, but we will select a different brush to get some different effects towards the end. So 
make sure you have one selected like that. If you don't, raise your hand, please don't call out, and I will come and assist you. Thank you. All right, now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the color tray, and we're going to talk about this for just a few minutes. So, the first thing is, you see this circle here that I'm making go around really, really, really fast? Look what it's doing to the square. It is turning the square whatever color I choose. Also, look at the big circle in the middle of this color wheel circle. It's changing as well. We're going to want to move that to blue. We're going to be making what's called a monochromatic painting. We're going to be only using this blue and then black and white. Okay, so move your color there. It can be a little bit here. It can be a little bit there. If you want more aqua or more purple, I'm going to stick right in the middle. Now, the next circle that we want to talk about is this circle right here. Notice how it's changing. This circle is really cool. It's the color mixing tray. And it's going to mix your color, which is all the way in the upper right hand corner, with white, which is in the left hand corner, black, which is all across the bottom here, and then you can make shades on the right hand side, tints across the top, shades are the color mixed with black, tints are the color mixed with white, and then also we have the gray scale, but we're not going to use that for this painting. What we want to do is we want to make a slightly dark blue because we're doing a winter night scene. So go just below of the corner, right about there. Okay? And now to get rid of the menu, you can either tap the, the rectangular button in the bottom left hand corner, or you can tap anywhere on the back of the screen. You might make a mark there, but don't worry about that. Now, the next thing we need to do is pinch out. If I take two fingers, and I pinch in, I make my paper very small. If I take my two fingers and pinch out, I can make it very large. For this, we want to make our color very large, I mean our paper very small, and then we want to make our mark very large, and then just paint the screen in blue. Should only take a couple seconds to do that, and then your eyes should go right back up to the screen. <clears throat> All right. And it, don't mat it doesn't matter if your mark looks slightly different from mine. It it, it's just going to make your painting look a little bit different, which is good. Every, a little bit of difference is awesome. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch colors really quick, and we're going to switch to white. So take your circle here and put it right about there. Not totally white, but a little bit, just a little bit away from it. We're going to use a very, very light tint of blue and then take your finger and just drag it across the bottom of your paper to make some snowy hills and if you want your hills to go up taller on one side that's fine if you go up too high just undo it and make it come back All right now we're gonna slide our slider down to about ninety and then we're gonna take our fingers and we're gonna zoom in and somewhere in the night sky not in the corner we're going to paint the moon. You can make it pretty big if you want. Paint the moon. Try to make it as round as possible. That looks pretty good. So put the moon in. Now we're going to add some stars in our background. So take your slider and move it all the way down to about 15. And then zoom in and just take your finger and just make a little circle with the tip of your finger. Now, you want to make sure that your stars aren't placed like a robot in this scene. You want to put some far apart, some really close together. Think about the night sky. Whoops, if you undo, just make a, just use the, if you make a mistake, just undo it. Think about the stars in the night sky. Some are close up, some are farther together. You can even make your mark smaller, really, really small, and make some really small stars that are going to look almost faded out in the distance. Use your fingers, your two fingers, to drag your paper along so that you can get to different areas. Zoom in. Zooming in makes things a lot easier when you're working small. When you're working large, you're going to want to zoom out. When you're working small, you're going to want to zoom in. By the way, if I take my finger, some of you might do this on accident, which is why I want to show you, but later on this will become useful on purpose. If I take my finger and hold, I get this ring here. Watch what happens when I drag the ring by holding down. 
you see how it's picking up the different colors this is a color selector so if I do this by accident and I got blue and I try to paint it doesn't do anything see I'm trying I'm wiggling my finger on the screen but nothing's happening that's because I'm painting the exact same color on top of it but if I go over here now I can pick that white back up because I want to keep making stars so if that happens to you just press and hold it's a quick way to switch be between colors let's say I want to get rid of this star right here if I pick up the blue I can erase it then I can go back pick up my white and I can repaint it now I got a star it's a quick way to make little changes make it better alright now then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna switch colors so open your mixing tray up and drag the dot down to the dark blue area we're gonna make some dark winter trees and we're gonna make these trees look really far off into the distance so I'm gonna turn my number down to about 20 doesn't have to be exact and I'm gonna make a little tree back here so there's the trunk make the trunk spread out a little bit and it, as it enters the, into the snow it gets wider think about trees that you've seen in real life this is called painting from imagination by the way when you think about things that you've seen and you just use that memory I mean it's not called painting by imagination I'm sorry it's called painting from memory when you use observations from the past it's called painting from memory. There's a little tree way back here. The smaller you make it, the further away it's going to look. That's called scale. When an artist uses size to make some things look close up and some things look farther away, it's called scale. If I want really teeny branches here, then I can go down to say 10 and I can make some teeny branches. And that's just going to add some more detail. I need to do that over here. All right, whoops. Now let's say that I want to put one more tree here, but I want this tree to be a little bit closer. So I'm going to maybe take my mark up to about 24, and I want to paint a really close up tree. And we're going to do some white trees on top of this that are going to be sort of mixed in with this. But today we'll just finish up with this last tree here. And then I'm going to show you guys how to play back your video. You can watch your watch your painting like a video so I've got my night sky I've got some stars up there and I've got some dark gloomy trees winter trees it, you could think of this as gloomy or you could think of it as calm and peaceful it's a calm winter's night you might have heard that before we never get to really experience that in Florida which is a shame but we can imagine it and some of you might, if you've lived in other places, might have experienced it as well. Alright, so there's our, our night sky. And then uh, what we're going to do the next time is we're going to add some snowy trees that are going to be closer up. And then we're going to actually make it look like it's snowing. So, um, now, to show your video as a playback, your painting as a playback as a video, I should say, what you need to do is you need to go back to the gallery and then tap on your painting to reopen it and you'll see the play button and then just press play and you'll see all of your steps alright and that's it so until next time